I loved my grandma's living room. A bowl of ice cream with strawberry sauce and the TV on with the sound real loud so that it shook the ornaments on top. I could have stayed there forever. But my dad came around with that smell on his breath and said I had to go with him right now. And I was gone. Into the street, away in a car, onto a bus to meet his new girlfriend, he said, who was better than mum, who wouldn't just leave like she had. And forget about us, forget about her own daughter, her own husband. But I knew mum just couldn't take it anymore. She told me just before she left. We got on a boat and a plane. We marched through the city even though my feet hurt real bad. And I went too slow and he nearly pulled my arm off, dragging me to our better life. He said he was sorry that he had accidentally hit me and cut my eye, but he told me to stop pestering him to let Grandma know we were okay. I never said her name to him again. I know he loves me though, in his own way. I did my hair really nice and I got to meet his new girlfriend. But she didn't notice people's hair, she just noticed Dad. And they had a party and my room upstairs had a lock on the outside, so I couldn't get on their nerves. But it also meant that they forgot my dinner all the time. And even though I was in my room, I still got on their nerves. And I had to be punished for that, because how else was I supposed to learn? And men kept coming round and the plans I had them make frightened me. But sometimes they left food behind, so that was good. And then one day, Dad didn't come back, and they said he never would come back. And his girlfriend was screaming, and she said she just wanted to get completely out of it, which she did. And I didn't cry or say a word. I didn't ask for help. I didn't tell on them. I didn't ask for food, I didn't move, I didn't really even breathe. And then a knock. A woman picked me up, her radio was loud and the house got smaller as I was taken away. The street, the dogs barking, the inside of her car, her air freshener, the seatbelt digging in my neck. She took me to some people who were nice, but they don't know what to do. They don't know who I am or where I belong. And so they ask me where, they ask me who, and I say, Grandma. Grandma is who? Grandma is where? But her living room is far, far, far from here. But the people didn't just give up. They picked up the phone and they made a call to someone who could help. And together they started to work. They worked to find my grandma. They emailed, they sent texts. They got in touch with people where she lived to make sure that what I remembered about her was true. That she was good and wanted to eat ice cream with me. That she knew how much a kid needs food. And once they had found that out, they had documents and legal forms, permissions, and things to write, read and sign that were harder to do than crossing any sea, worse than any city that I've ever made it through. They knew me. They knew thousands of kids like me from Europe, Africa, from Asia, from all over the world, all with somewhere that they could be safe, who all deserved their family, no matter how far they had drifted from where that family was. They'd been doing this since World War II, children and families across borders. And then, my grandma, we had the biggest squeeze, the biggest kiss, and I was back. We wrote to them, we said thanks, and we turned the TV on and had a massive bowl of ice cream with extra strawberry sauce. I was safe. I was a kid again. They had got me home. <laughs>